today. Very fangirl moment for myself. I'll be very honest with you. I actually kept telling her this during the song break as well. But I've been kind of stalking her on social media for a while. And she creates humbooks. They are size inclusive. She has amazing brand. And I have her in the studio today. She is CEO Katharina. Hello. Hi. It's nice to see you. <laughs> Hello. It's nice to meet you. You dropped your pen, didn't you? I did. Just Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay, first things first, please introduce yourself to our listeners just to kind of say hi and who you are. Um, My name is Katharina He and I'm CEO of Hoya Evening Butterfly, the world's first plus size friendly humbug. There we go. I sense a little bit of an accent. It's, it's like I grew up in eight different countries, so it's like all It's all mixed. there. Okay, so like eight different there. countries includes where? Um, so... Well, I was I was born in America, but okay. like after seven months we moved. Okay. Of my first job. Okay. And then we moved to Yemen. Wow. And the Netherlands, and then we came to Korea when I turned seven. Okay. Then we moved to Germany, <laughs> and then we moved to Hungary, and then we moved to Canada, and then I went to college in America. So in total, like eight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of a mix of different. I think so, but okay. I, my ears are just really sensitive. So if I live in America long, if I stay in America and just talk with my American friends, then I kind of adapt. start to adapt it. But okay. then when I come back here, it's it's funny because um, all of my friends I met back in Europe are still here. Okay. Oh. So when I talk with them, then oh. it just... It kind of comes, comes back. back. It comes back. I love it. Oh my god, I love it. I, and I love that you've been like living all around the world. So uh, I know that you've kind of been doing a few interviews here and there. Is radio like your first? Is this your first radio? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> All right, so the kind of the reason why I was able to convince our staff to have you in the studio was because you create humbooks, mm-hmm. but you create them on a spectrum where they are size inclusive, yes. especially for us girls who have a figure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are not a stick, mm-hmm. pretty much, mm-hmm. which I feel a lot of humbooks have been designed to kind of fit over the years. Right. So uh, kind of let's talk about your brand. So it, it is, Hoya is the brand. Yep, it okay. is. Okay. So yeah, is your brand. Uh, when did this kind of start? Um, so I actually remember the exact day when I opened my online shop. Okay. It was October 18th, 2020. Okay. And I just started very like as like a very small business. Uh-huh. I was just making jewelry at the first time. Okay. Um, it's because I've been always super into East Asian cultures in general. Like I love Chinese culture, I love Japanese culture, I love Thai culture and everything. And I just really couldn't find that kind of style jewelry, like especially in America. Like, right. It was really hard to purchase uh-huh. unless you buy it in that country. Right, and then have it shipped and then yeah. it becomes more money because you paid for like a $20 thing, but then it comes like $200 because of shipping. Yeah, the shipping issues, but also um, many online shops um, it's kind of hard to purchase unless you speak Korean or yeah. unless you have the Korean, complicated Korean banking right, 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 in, right. on your phone. So I always felt like, well, this kind of feels unfair. <laughs> so <laughs> I was, I'm gonna make it super accessible. Okay, so that's why I started it. <laughs> okay, so you're you seeing uh, more inconveniences as a consumer helped yeah. kind of spark that. Basically, yeah. Okay. Um, now, I mean, an idea like that is is great. I feel like a lot of people are probably sitting at their desk job right now mm-hmm. and being like, I've got an idea like that. Yeah, I've got mm-hmm. plenty of like inconveniences right. in any type of shopping I have. Mm-hmm. But it, it takes a an extraordinary individual to make that into like a business, to like take that leap to start the process. Right. So did you already have kind of like that hobby of making things like that? Or were was it just like, you know what? I don't care if I have the money. I'm just going to do it anyways. You know, who cares if we go bankrupt? Like, how, was it like a gradual thing or was it just like, I'm going to do this? Um, It's kind of both, okay. actually. Because, um, well, that's more about clothing. Um, but when I started jewelry, it was more like, um, well, I did have a hobby 
before, so it was my friend who taught me how to make them. Like, okay. You know, opening the jump ring and how to right, close right, them. Right. And then she was like, oh, this is basically how you create your own jewelry. And I was like, oh, that's fascinating. So I'm going to like try as a hobby. Uh huh. And then I had like really small amount of followers. But because I post them, they were like, oh, do you, are you willing to sell it? Because right. I love okay. it. Okay. So that's how I was like, okay, well. I guess I could try because I lost my job due to COVID. So why not? <laughs> okay, so this kind of started pretty much at like the peak of the pandemic. So like yeah. just the pandemic kind of helped change your life for a little bit more of a positive. Yeah, basically. Basically. <laughs> so you started off as doing jewelry, but then how did it kind of lead into doing humbugs? Because I feel that humbugs is a very... It's a very simpler but yet complicated topic. Very different right. as well. Um, so I always had a thought in my mind um, because I enjoyed wearing hanbok since I was like 14 or 15. Okay. Not like super traditional ones. Right, right, right. The modernized ones. Right. And um, I could not find it in my size. Right. Or maybe the only thing that fit me was the skirt because they're a wrap skirt. It's right. pretty flexible, but not the top or anything else. And I was always thinking since I was 15, like, okay, maybe 10 years later, there might be a bigger uh, size humble uh, 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 available. Uh, uh. So I was basically a consumer okay. of modernized humble. But even 10 years past, nobody is making it. Right. So it kind of, kind of it started with an anger <laughs> basically like because some humble brands did like promise the consumers like oh we're gonna make a bigger size this time but that was still like US 12 so right it's, like, large or extra large but I was still like okay well still it's better than Nothing. me trying to right. fit into medium size right 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 I was, I was really happy but they were like kept cancelling it when they promised it and so like okay. it just felt unfair like i obviously understand the struggle of making hmm. um bigger size clothes because first of all firstly like it's really hard to find a mannequin as well like right. i tried to find it there's none they don't, yeah <laughs> so i understand the struggle but as a consumer it just felt really unfair right so yeah it just a little fire just started in my heart right and so and you already had the business in accessories so i mean you probably just had to you could kind of like build on that that's all you needed to yeah, kind of do you already had the business aspect mm -hmm. in there so mm -hmm. all you would have to do is add more products mm -hmm. so uh a lot of our listeners vicky is overseas and from what i know your online store actually focuses more on i feel consumers in the u.s currently uh, mm -hmm. Is this true? Uh, when you look at your consumer base and when you're sending, I've been noticing you have quite the uh, the phone calls with the <laughs> delivery services through your stories. But um, where do you see most of your clientele coming from for the Humboldts? Um, I guess America first because okay. the shop itself is, is located in, right. in the States. But interestingly... Most of my customers who purchase in America are Korean Americans oh. or Korean adoptees okay. or mainly um, Korean people. Okay. Because uh, I know this because they always add like a little note when they check out. They're like, hi, I'm Korean adoptee. I've been looking for this mm. for ages. Thank you. I get like all these messages. Right. That's how I know it. Okay. Okay. But uh, our listeners, we do have a lot of Latin listeners, honestly. Oh. And if they were to order through your online show, sending it to Latin America is not a problem. Absolutely not a problem. Absolutely not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Even though she does spend most of her days on the phone with delivery companies, <laughs> it seems. <laughs> um, so uh, you said that you got into, you know, as a hobby of being into accessories. And I think that making jewelry is one thing because I feel that if you have an idea, mm -hmm. there's no real rule, so mm -hmm. to speak, to making jewelry, I would have to say I don't make it, so I, I can't say for sure. But mm -hmm. for clothing, what unfortunately I have found is there's things called patterns. Mm -hmm. And there's things, yep. there's like a whole new world mm -hmm. of like language wise, like it's English, but it's not English. Mm -hmm. It's Korean, but it's not Korean. Yeah. Um, and obviously you do the manufacturing, it seems, here in Korea, because yeah. you seem to be going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So have you ever studied like sewing or have you did you have any knowledge of that before you started the humble line so um i was 
going to major in fashion design actually up oh. until I was 17 I was applying um, art colleges and art universities and I was very certain about it okay. so I did learn how to use a sewing machine or okay. not the pattern though not the pattern and design is completely different oh, yeah, thing. right right but I did study fashion design up until 17 so okay. my mom forced me to study art since oh. I was seven so I knew like basically how to draw and like everything okay okay so that kind of just came together yeah. so manufacturing wise i've been noticing that you manufacture mostly here mm, yep okay so even though the shop is in mostly up until now it's been in the states mm-hmm. you've been going back and forth here yes to get a manufacturer yeah. so for anybody who might wanted to start their own company like maybe they have the same fire that you have of, mm-hmm. of a certain out- outfit or a certain line that they might want to be doing and they want to do this based in korea what is the first step? Do they go to Dongdaemun and meet up with the people that sew there? Like, how does your manufacturing go from design to all of it? Design. So, um, my case is pretty unique because I make cultural items. Right. So, I thought, well, I could have done it in the States, to be honest. Like, right. You know, because there is fabric market right, in the right, US, right. too. There are manufacturers in the US, too. But because it's specifically Korean Hamburg, I wanted to be made in Korea. Mm. I wanted to um, I wanted to gather Korean Hamburg makers right. and then create this clothing line. And I specifically wanted um, older women to do it because they tend to not have many job opportunities or even if they're Hamburg makers, they get order like a custom order request maybe like five times a year. Right. But they don't make enough money. If I wanted to give them a an opportunity, opportunity to wow. make more money. So our team is all women. It's like there we go. <laughs> all women. It's like woman power. Woman power over there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so how does it start? So do you kind of have Zoom meetings with your staff and be like, okay, next humble this is the design we're going for like are you treating this like a collection every time something is made or is it just kind of like print by print or is it custom order how how does it work for you so very first time what i first did was going to the traditional market that's okay. where they have all the humble fabric right and then i picked out what i want to make with you know choose fabric carefully and then i found a vendor i tried to find somebody who's willing to make this clothes okay and fortunately i did after what, like trying to find somebody who could do help me with it for like three weeks wow yeah, because i've been asking everybody else, right like. right 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 and traditional market can be a bit conservative right so at the first they're like right oh, i don't think a big like a big woman looks great in Hamburg mm. but they kind of denied it right but I convinced them <laughs> I was kept like please help us um, that's how it did it that's how it started okay. in the beginning now fortunately I hired another woman designer who can help me with um, making a collection so like for future releases we yeah. are going to be seeing some more like collection based yes. themes so okay. now sh- um, I do a lot of zoom meetings especially <laughs> when I'm in the states at like 10pm right I'm just like okay I want to make this now uh-huh. and then she would Basically, she would do something that I will have to do in Korea. She will go to the market and do like a okay. fabric research mm. and then like I sent me videos and pictures and see what do you think about mm. this one. Um, it's kind of complicated. Right. I cannot feel the fabric. Right, right. Yeah, but she has to explain. She's like, this is like really silky satin. <laughs> it's like shiny. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. Um, sure. Okay, sure. I'll take your word for it. Well, yeah, because uh, I still can't do it too, but I was learning how to sew and my teacher does it. So apparently anybody who is actually like designed or has studied uh-huh. design, it's a habit of theirs to take swatches and just be like, oh, yeah, touch, 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 touch. And she will touch like a bazillion things that look exactly the same. She's like, no, this one has a little bit more of like resistance to it. This mm-hmm. one's a little bit more silky. Right. Wow. You you have even you have a right hand man to do a Zoom meeting. with. <laughs> and she's like trying to be like, uh, this is more silky. 
<laughs> this one is um, more see-through. <laughs> it, that, that's how basic our conversation goes, <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Fam, we're going to be talking a lot more about uh, Humbooks. We're going to be talking about the brand Hoya. I think a lot of you are super curious as to, like, how you can get your hands on more items, more clothes, and all that other stuff. So if you have any more questions and messages through the V Live, through our YouTube live stream, or through our homepage, continue to send those in. But in the meantime, since uh, we've got such a fabulous insight in the studio, we're going to take a listen to some Tusok and uh, Insung on the track with hip hop music and see you guys back after this with more of the show. It's Insider Day as you continue to listen to the second hour of K-pop in here on Adidang Radio. I am in the awesome presence of CEO Katarina in the studio. I was actually just asking her about her name because I'm so used to Esther's (laughs) (laughs) and Jessica's (laughs) and uh, yeah, a lot of those. So I was just saying how beautiful her name was. And there's a behind story behind this. Um, yeah, it's, it's my baptized name because my mom used to be Catholic. Okay. So that's how she gave me that name. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. It's a beautiful name. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's Maho was asking on our uh, YouTube live stream that I remember seeing a video where some of the fabric that you used was a vintage humbug fabric. Was that a choice due to the design of that particular humbug or what, did it have to, something to do with sustainability? Um, there are many reasons, actually. So firstly, I like fleshy stuff. Yes. Extra girl. Yes. Um, so any, everything that was available in the market were, didn't satisfy me. Right. It wasn't like flashy enough. It wasn't extra enough. And then I found these beautiful vintage fabric in the corner of the room, like, it was literally like in the corner and right. I asked them like what is this and they're like oh these are the fabric that were made like 10 or 20 years ago and nobody uses them so it's kind of just stuck in the right. storage and um, they in the fir- at the first time they kind of um, went against my opinion because they were like oh it, this is going to be really hard because each fabric has different design right so you cannot mass produce it right right and right, then right you right. also have to basically take pictures of each skirt so right. that's too much work right right but I really wanted to use that it was too pretty not to not to buy it. so I was just like um, I'll, I'll take it I'll take the risk I'll just work harder I'll just sleep three hours a day and then I picked it out <laughs> and that was the first reason like, it was flashy and it was really mm-hmm. beautiful second was due with the sustainability okay. um, because they're 100% biodegradable silk so wow. it cannot like um, you can literally burn it and it will just turn Disappear. into ashes okay. it's not gonna be like rolling uh, <laughs> on the ground for like 200, 300 right. years, like polyester. Right. So due to the sustainability would be the second um, reason. Okay. And third is I'm actually not the first person to ever make hanbok with vintage fabric. There were already two different hanbok designers who did that. I really wanted to buy it, but the skirts were like this small. Mm. So I couldn't buy mm. it. So obviously mm. I wanted in right. my size. Right, 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 <laughs> that right. That was the third reason. So yeah, there are um there are three reasons why I used these fabric and that okay. would be it. Um so from from now on, since we do have another designer on board and you know the collections are starting to come and whatnot, um, do you plan on trying to use a little bit more sustainable fabrics? Um despite maybe price in the future or I actually recently made the trousers and then even though it's a little bit not really um, flexible or kind of um, it doesn't feel super soft um, but I did choose like recycled nylon okay with absolutely no polyester okay um, it cost a lot <laughs> but I mean that's the bare minimum I could do for the earth right right so, right right, right. Um, yeah I'm I'm looking for fabric that are more eco-friendly for sure okay i think that's something i want to pursue right in this business okay okay um so i was looking at your outfit that you're wearing today and i have to say that it's slaying and on so many different levels so i'm looking at the skirt and it seems you told me that it was hand embroidered yep yeah. The jacket, so you're because uh, the ones that I've been seeing, they're very flamboyant. They're also extremely beautiful. <laughs> Were these already p- 
prints that were on there. Yeah. So they, these Same were already print. on there. Yes. So this, these are the patterns that were trending back in like 10, 20 years ago. So this is this is why you wanted them pretty much. Yep. Yeah, it, it pretty much explains it though because, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. the placing and everything, it's just, it's superb. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, I guess the the trend in Hanbok at the moment is more like about simple mm. and very subtle mm-hmm. and just giving like a very pastel colors. I mean, right. I like them too, but I'm just more of a extra person. <laughs> no, I mean, and yes, extra is the best. Um, when it comes to the z- designs, I feel that uh, you were saying it earlier about the traditional markets were very conservative. Mm-hmm. I feel that it's been a universal topic. So I've been talking with a few different Hanbok designers mm-hmm. here in Korea. Uh, Tana, who is extremely big right now, thanks to Blackpink. Um, Kim Nier as well. Mm-hmm. He's been using Hanbok um, fabric to make suits. And oh, when yeah. I'm asking both of them like questions like, what do you define as like a Hanbok? Mm-hmm. I feel that that's like the biggest topic right now between elders or people who think that Hanboks need to quote unquote look a certain uh-huh, way. Right. To where, you know, I mean, the 21st, we're you know we're not in the chosen dynasty anymore <laughs> so where does a lot of the inspiration come from for your humbugs um do you kind of take it based off of just like the fabric you see um or how do you just just decide if this is going to be like a short jacket or like a long skirt short skirt because you do have a short skirt mm-hmm. on right now so how does that process go um well since it is a cultural wear and it's a traditional item um i do get inspirations from the Hanbok books like okay. the really old ones like from Korean old folk paintings okay. and sometimes I go to like National Museum in Korea they have stunning stunning pieces oh, yeah. and those inspire me a lot okay. for sure um, so that's why I kept with very basic items in the beginning just such okay. as long skirt or just slightly min- I mean they're called mini but they're not even really mini lengths right, they right, cover right, my right. knees right 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 <laughs> Okay, you would not consider this a mini skirt. <laughs> so, yeah, I started with very basic stuff like mm-hmm. a wrap skirt. And then um, I get inspirations a lot from my followers, actually, because okay. they, they throw me ideas. And I think it's incredible because me as a creator and the followers who are the customers, we basically share opinions together and then we create a unique piece together. I think that's what makes uh, my pieces unique because it's majority of them are opinions or suggestions that I got from my followers. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so up until now, I think one of the most common questions I saw on your actual shopping page at the moment mm-hmm. was... Are you ever going to restock? Is like, this, are you going to get a restock of this? Is this coming oh. back into stock? Is this a restock? Which, because I feel as a consumer, because we can browse your feed and we can browse the stuff that's been purchased in the past, and like we see your oh, videos, yeah. and like, oh, that's so cute. Is that there any? So for for now, pretty much because of the limited access to the fabric that you had at hand, pretty much all of the ones that are sold out are done basically pretty yes. much like sometimes if i'm lucky enough i do find um for example like two rolls of same pattern fabric right then i can make two right but usually they only have one mm-hmm. left only so right i did explain like from the beginning thing guys this is a uh, fabric like a dead mm-hmm. stock fabric that's not ever gonna come back so right. once it's sold so it's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's probably not going to come back, but okay. we do have like similar ones. That's okay. what I've been explaining from the very beginning. Right, yeah. Well, well, yeah, and I mean, obviously, as a smaller business, it's obviously a little bit more of a process of explaining to the people who are purchasing your clothes mm-hmm. than, you know, like a big name brand. Right. Um, I've been seeing on a few of these like, you know, fa- fashion competition programs that they've been like creating their their own fabric so it seems like patterns right. now are pretty much done like everybody's done every single pattern mm-hmm. or like design out there mm-hmm. so now people are trying to get more unique with the way that the fabric is printed right so right. for the future for Hoya as a collection maybe would that be something that you would also maybe like to think of as a CEO I would love to if I can afford it <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. I would love to make my own print. Like, right. Maybe with, because um, our brand name Hoya means evening butterfly, maybe with some butterfly patterns or the logo of right. our brand. That would, be, that would be brilliant. I would love to do that. We really love to. <laughs> Only if I have the money. <laughs> it always ends up coming down to this. <laughs> Um, so, so far, I mean, Hoya as a brand is sustainable. It's trying to access the consumer as conveniently as possible, it seems. Um, price-wise, I'd have to be very honest, because these are like one-of-a-kind items. I'd have to say the price range, prefer- I mean, it's not cheap, but then again, it's not like the most expensive thing in the world out there either. Mm-hmm. Um, for what you're getting, I feel that so far the brand is kind of off to a great start. Um, so we're, it, as a, a CEO, and I noticed that you're, you did a pop-up or like a sto- showroom recently here in Seoul. So uh, what is the future of maybe like offline instead of just online purchases? Are we ever going to be seeing like an offline store? Yeah, so um, I'm actually opening a showroom. Right. In, it's near DDP. Okay. Right in front of, uh, not, actually not the front, but the back. Right, right, right. right. Back side of the Gwanghi Moon Gate. Ooh. The Gwanghi Gate. So it has a spectacular view. <laughs> and um, we're almost done, actually. I, okay. It's just construction. There's just some things that are left to do. Okay. But we're almost done. Um, I made like a, little section where I put all of our vintage that stock fabric so customers can pick whatever color they want and then so then we can like make it right away when they pick it I made like a cute little station in the showroom really so So we can actually go and get like a -a one-of-a-kind yeah you can so that's what I wanted to do so that's why it took a while but yeah it's almost getting finished um it's not like a like a permanent. temporary uh. pop up. It's a permanent, and unless I go bankrupt, so it will be always there. Okay, so it's gonna be there. So yeah. even though you plan to probably go back and forth to the states, mm-hmm. we're gonna have people, yep. taking care of the showroom. Yes. yes. Okay, so pretty much in Seoul, if you're there, all we need to do is go check out the showroom as it's going to be there for uh, the time being. Uh, Before we go into a song break, oh, do I want to just have to know? You brought in a bag, and I don't know if it's to show us or if it's just stuff that you needed to take to uh the shop later on but what was in your bag that you brought in? I brought a few of my pieces to show it to you because I thought that would be great (laughs) to share. Can I see them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yay. I, I, I was going to maybe go to a song break, but no, a song break later. Um, where she brought in clothes. <laughs> I'm a kid in a candy store at the moment. She brought some of her humbugs. Okay. So, uh, these are some of the designs that I'm guessing that either are these yours or are these ones that we can actually see in the showroom if I go later on today? Um, <laughs> you, you, so, they're... I yeah. need to know if I can open my wallet or not. <laughs> These are, um, so, again, made with that stock fabric, so uh, we have tons of them, but, um, yeah, these are not, like, sold-out ones. Okay, so. okay, so these are actually available. So, like, for example, excuse, the number is just for me to... <laughs> just to know which number yeah. it is. So that would be the most popular mini humbug skirt. There we go. Look at this. Look at the color. Oh, look at the designs. So again, these are designs that were already on the fabric. Okay. And some of them are like even hand painted. Some of them are hand embroidered. Um, I think it's brilliant. They are all amazing. Very flashy. Yes, please. You Mm -hmm. gotta love the, we have to live for the flash. Okay, Mm -hmm. I'll let you pull out another one. (laughs) Not not so that we step on all of the Um, amazing. The other one is like uh, the salt out slit skirts Ooh, oh yeah your slit skirts are extremely these, beautiful these were really popular but it just it just it takes eight hours to make one slit skirt so it takes a while to restock them that's it takes eight hours to make one of these <laughs> yep so that's why i don't have many of them because everyone bought it literally everyone bought like everything Fam, <laughs> looking at the the seams there's a reason why this takes eight hours <laughs> wow. everything is overworked Wow, that is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Again, these are size inclusive, fam. Mm-hmm. These are size inclusive. Oh, yeah, yeah, 56 inches in the waist. Whoa, so look at that. That's, yeah, very inclusive. Very <laughs> inclusive. And one thing that you were saying earlier, though, that mm-hmm. um, the humble itself, because it is a wrap skirt, mm-hmm. it is a little bit more adjustable. Yeah. 
for it people mm -hmm. when they do wear them. Yeah, so um, this is the most popular size because um, it can fit from person like me. So I'm like US 14. Okay. And it fits people up to US 28. Wow. So very that's why inclusive. it's very flexible. Very impressive. <laughs> as soon as we started showing these, our chat just went crazy. They're like, OMG, OMG, OMG. <laughs> the chat has gone crazy. <laughs> um, so slit skirt wise. So I feel that these small, the shorter skirts and the more, you know, like skirt skirt ones mm -hmm. are, are in stock with the the slip, the the side slip ones are like slit. I don't have many, but okay. I d I am like constantly okay. making them. Okay, for sure. it just, there we it, go. It just takes a long time to create one. <laughs> to create one. Yeah, I think I saw you post one of those as well. Mm -hmm. That the process of making these actually, it's not a m very fast fashion mm -hmm. item. Yeah, we are definitely slow fashion. <laughs> <laughs> slow fashion. Then we're going to take a quick song break. If you have any more questions and messages for our fabulous insider for today, please continue to do that. We also have an OX quiz coming up since it's our idol for today. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, though, we've got Tung Soon and Penamiko on the track with Feeling and more of our insiders coming up after this. It's Wednesday. It's Insider Day here on K-Pop. And as you continue to listen to Adidang Radio, I'm your host, Isak. And today, as it's the last day of the five days horror holiday, I had to have a sit down with a young and hip, in her 20s, inclusive size, humble CEO, Katarina in the studio. Thank you so much for being here on this holiday. Uh, it's my honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I love <laughs> everything we're talking about today. So um, we are going, we have this segment as kind of like we treat everybody who is in this seat, that, not as a hot seat, but more of like you're an idol for today. <laughs> so channel your black pink or whoever, Sunmi or whoever else, a uh, female celebrity that you love. Uh, you are going to be OX questions that we're going to ask you. Uh, you're going to use that little uh -huh. panel in front of you and i'm going to count down from three to see what your answer is to these questions i think i'm going to get a lot of o's but we'll see so i think i am the most charming thing in the world i wouldn't change myself even if they wanted to three two one of course <laughs> <laughs> okay um, when, uh, if I look back at my, uh, childhood and where I could have gone, uh, maybe I would have loved to go back to maybe working on music again. Three, two, one. Oh. Ooh. I actually didn't stop. I'm still making okay. albums, actually. Okay, <laughs> so she's still making music. There we go. Uh, as you've been making more humbugs, uh, and seeing more celebrities make them, there's actually a celebrity I would love to dress with my clothes. Three, two, one. Yes. Okay. Uh, after, you know, doing a few interviews and being on today's show, I think that, you know, broadcast isn't that bad. I feel that maybe doing more TV or broadcast would be definitely something I'd like to do. Three, two, one. Like, like. <laughs> I don't know. Spinning it, spinning it, spinning it. I'm an introvert, so. Oh, there we go. And uh, there is so many things more, not just Toya itself, that I am willing to dive in and just explore businessly. Three, two, one. Okay. Of course. <laughs> of course. So, who's this celebrity that you would love to, or celebrities that you would love to dress? One and only, CL. There we CL. go! <laughs> the queen! So, okay, if you were to dress CL, what kind of humble would you want to give her? Would you want to give her, like, the Met Gala type of a humble design? Or would you want her to be more of, like, a stage performance design? Because I feel they'd be very different. I actually brought it, if you don't mind sharing it. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh so yes, please. <laughs> I, so CL, um, I think she's an absolutely amazing person. And she also always wears a bit of, she always like adds like a traditional accent to mm -hmm, it. Even mm -hmm. like the Met Gala, like. It was very the, Hamburg inspired. Yeah, right. like the, the bow. And um, if you watch her like other performances, she wears a lot of, um, Korean style clothes that people do not recognize. Right. Even. Like she once wore like a padded jacket, but that was in Sekdong. Right, pattern, right, 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 like right, 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 right. So um, I I didn't bring it in her size, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is size inclusive anyways. Yeah. This is actually, this is not hanbok. So this is actually more like a tech wear okay. um, trousers that I designed, but I we did use like a leftover hanbok material. fabric. Right. To make so, it. 
This is actually the plus size one, but <gasps> Oh, look so, at the design. Oh my goodness. So it has the like so it has like six pockets <laughs> and the top here that's made of Hamburg fabric, but right. these are recycled nylon because sustainability is <laughs> a big thing for you. Yeah, right. But I did think I would I did like think of CL when I was designing this piece. Like definitely. I was only thinking about her. <laughs> definitely. I would totally see her wear this, like for a performance, highlight it, mm -hmm. give her a crop top, even a togori on top, mm -hmm. open it. There yeah. we go. CL, if you're watching this, <laughs> this is reserved for you. Come get it. <laughs> Come get it. I will fly myself to your location <laughs> to give this to you personally. <laughs> um, so talking about music, you've always been uh, a fan of music, it seems. So other than CL, do you have any other music that you really love to listen to? Are you talking about like... Um uh, artists specifically artists or artist like genre? genre it doesn't matter maybe like your own stuff when you create it are you more of like a k-hip-hop like a cl oriented type of uh, a genre or i actually listen to like 70s 80s 90s k-pop really like when, really? I, when i lived in korea when people are so busy going to like nightclubs in itaewon or hongdae like for hip like music, hey, but, uh, 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 I went to Uljiro and Jonglo for that type of music. <laughs> You're an old soul. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you love going to like you know these old like uh, LP bars and listen to those like classics. Mm -hmm. There, there, there are go. even like microphone and when usually like a lot of elderly people out there and they just sing like the old 60s, 70s K-pop and then I think that's just amazing because it's the type of music I love <laughs> and they're always like these elderly people are like how do you know this song? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It, it's it's fun. It's something I always recommend to. My friends who visit Korea, like, really? I'm like, don't go to Itaewon, go to Jonglo. That's, right. That's the that's, that's the hot thing. place yeah. to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hot place to be. Whoa, that's amazing. Is there any like uh, older artist, like more of a veteran artist, dead or alive, that you would like to maybe like collaborate if you could? Like it's a dream <gasps> collaboration. Uh. I love, I love how like all the closed questions today, she's like, oh, I have nothing, no problem answering this. But now it's like music. <laughs> okay, hold on. I have too many. Uh, <laughs> one son on me. Ooh, <laughs> There we go. So yeah, she's over there in the corner with like immortal song specials that she loves <laughs> to watch. Or, and the new also like Patty Kim. There I, we go. I've, I've seen her in real life. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't say anything. I was... <laughs> but I think she would look amazing in Hamburg. Too. Oh she yeah, she has that aura. Like oh yeah, and in your stuff, she would nail it, mm -hmm. nail mm -hmm. it. Okay, so maybe the next time I see uh, Katarina, she's gonna be having uh, Patty Kim with us and like a whole new <laughs> line of clothing and whatnot. Fam, you can find her on social media. So we didn't even get a chance to talk about your social media career. Now I was gonna talk about that too today. Okay. Uh, we have to say goodbye. Uh, other than the store that we are seeing, the offline store that's popping up, is there anything that Hoya fans can look forward to in 2022? In 2022. Are we getting more lines? Is there new stuff launching? Yeah, Um. so you guys will definitely see the the Hamburg trousers, like Hamburg-inspired trousers. And I'm making also like a Hamburg robe that you can wear like, very casually at home or like outdoor as well, like both. Um, and more like actual, like traditional style chokori, because a lot of people have been asking for it. Right, right, so right. That's definitely something I'm working on at the moment. Okay. Well, with that, it seems like we already have to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully, I can have you back in the studio sometime soon. Thank you. All right, bye. Be amazing. bye bye. It's time for me to sign off, and as I do, we've got eight singing creeps. Close that lips, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye!